Hello, my name is Carlos Rivera and I'm the director of your Health and Human Services Department. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to come to before you today to present the Health and Human Services Fiscal Year 2014 Financial Forecast. Every day in our community, public health professionals perform activities aimed at performing, at improving and protecting our health and wellness. These professionals work within five divisions in my department. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about those divisions and also talk to you about some of the activities that they perform. First division is the Maternal and Child and Adolescent Health Division. This division performs activities such as breastfeeding, education, and teen pregnancy prevention. We also have the Community Services Division, which does basic needs assistance and job readiness. Disease Prevention and Health Promotion is a division that performs disease surveillance and disease management. Inspections, are, inspections and nuisance abatements are performed by the Environmental Health Services Division. And the Support Services Division is, is where the Office of the Director resides along with HR, IT, Budgeting, and Accounting. There's a few things that you should note about this department. First of all, we have a $63.4 million budget, which pays for 417 employees of which 32 percent of the funding for the department is grant funded and this grant funding pays for 51 percent of our FTEs. Within the maternal child adolescent division and also the community services division and the disease prevention health promotion division there is 26.9 million dollars worth of social services contracts which pay for the infrastructure for the department to promote health and wellness. I have two key performance indicators for you today. The first one is of great importance to, to me and also to our community. Um, based on the Healthy People 2020 a standard of 81.9%, uh, the department exceeds that standard for breastfeed for mothers breastfeeding their children. We're at 92%. This is an important indicator of our health of our children as one of the most important things, if not the most important thing that a mother can do for her child is to breastfeed that child to improve the child's immune system. The next uh, performance measure that I have for you is the number of routine inspections per fixed food establishments. Um, there's a lot of depth to this indicator right here, but first of all, let's just start by saying that the state standard is two inspections per fixed food establishment. The department is currently at 1.78. As you can see, we're a little bit below the standard and there's real good reasons for that and good news is that Austin does very well from an e economic standpoint. We have an 18 percent growth in our fixed food establishments over the last few years and we've also had a 33 percent increase in the number of inspections required by my staff. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the impact of the, of the growing economy in the unmet needs section. The cost drivers for, for the department come in, in two forms. There are department-wide cost drivers and then there are city-wide cost drivers. These cost drivers have added 2.9% increase in cost for the department. In the department-wide cost drivers totaling $672,000, that area is composed of workforce development that was transferred from the sustainability fund, grant support, decrease in one-time funding for an organization called Child Inc the transfer of the Center for Child Protection to the Austin Police Department, and the transfer of the Animal Protection Supervisor position to the Animal Services uh, Office. The citywide cost drivers total $489,000, and those are made up of the health insurance increases in fuel and fleet maintenance. Revenue forecast. We're pleased to announce that uh, we will see an increase in our, in our revenue of 5.5%, um, totaling $400,000 over last year. The, this increase will be made up of the Travis County Interlocal, which is a total of $3.2 million. And the Environmental Health Services Division's fees will total $3.5 million. Vital record fees will total $560,000. And patient fees and reimbursements will total $377,000. We also have fiscal year 14 capital highlights for you. Um, these projects were approved in the 2012 bond election. The first project is the Montopolis and Far South parking lot expansion. The Health and Human Services Department has 13 WIC offices, and this expansion of parking lots will impact two of those sites. Um, as we can see by the, by the need for expansion, the, the needs of our community are growing, 
and the WIC program is available to meet those needs. So we're very pleased to announce those expansions. We're also having work done at our Betty Dunkerley campus, work around drainage and roadway improvements, and we have a partnership with the Parks and Recreation Department, or otherwise known as PARD, to have a joint facility at the Montopolis Community Center. Our unmet needs. Our foremost priority in the Health and Human Services Department is to provide a safe and stable work environment for our staff members. Our top request for this upcoming year is security guards at the cost of $161,000. That will help us ensure the stability of our work environments. As I mentioned before, uh, the city of Austin has seen tremendous economic growth and uh, that, has pressed, uh, that has put a certain amount of pressure on my inspectors to perform their job responsibilities. We're requesting $310,000 um, to hire four additional inspectors. Austin, again, is a great town to live in and it's got lots of activities available to the public such as South by Southwest. Coda, the, the F1 racetrack. We have many fixed food establishments. We have ongoing festivals almost daily. We have temporary food events and mobile food establishments. As they grow, the need for their inspections grow. And again, we've had a 33% increase in inspections. And in order to maintain the public safety and, and well being, we need those adi four additional inspectors in order to perform those responsibilities. We're also pleased in that Austin is a charitable city and we take care of home, uh, we meet the needs of the homeless population on a daily basis. In order to meet that growing demand, we are requesting one supervisor to help us with contract management in a variety. We have a variety of contracts with the Salvation Army, Front Steps, Caritas, just to name a few of our providers. We also need additional case managers to oversee the delivery of those services and funding, emergency funding to provide uh, funding for those residents who might find themselves homeless if not for uh, simple cash infusion. The Maternal and Child Adolescent Health Division is a year and a half old division and within that division we have created a maternal and infant outreach program which we are very pleased and very proud of. This program was created through a federal, state, and city partnership and the goal of the program is to perform outreach to at-risk African-American women um, who are pregnant. Uh, we aim to do this through the introduction of community health workers into their homes, folks that are culturally similar, that can help them navigate not only the health system, but also have a sense of what they need to do to have a positive, a healthy birth outcome. There are, the African Americans in, in our population suffer from some of the worst health statistics in our community. The African American Quality of Life program was created to address this issue. To date, the African American Quality of Life program performs health education and health screening responsibilities. We want to expand the scope of that program to include a comprehensive approach to getting the health care needs of these individuals met. For example, if an individual is hypertensive, we not only want to tell that individual that he's hypertensive or that she's hypertensive, but we want to make sure that we direct the individual to an area where they can get those services, their, get their service needs met, and also have a basic fundamental understanding of what they need to do in their homes in order to take care of themselves and manage their disease status. This, the, the inclusion or the introduction of these services will do, accomplish two things not only improve the health of African Americans in our community, but also improve their ability to negotiate the system and while teaching us lessons on what we need to do as health providers to improve the health of, of our most vulnerable and at-risk populations. That concludes my presentation and I want to thank you for your interest in the Health and Human Services Department and in the health and wellness of our community. We appreciate your support. Thank you.